My tests are failing, so I want to debug this situation. Let's narrow down on one test. So I'm going to do forge test dash dash match test and the name of the test that seems to be problematic. Okay, and what I can see right now is that the value that's returned is not the expected value, and that's strange. So one thing I can do just almost immediately is increase the verbosity of the test output. And I really like dash VVV, three Vs. That prints out a complete stack trace of the execution. And ordinarily for like a lot of smart contract code, this is extremely helpful. I find that, you know, a lot of times I can just debug it by viewing the stack trace and understanding what's wrong. In this case, the test that we're working with is actually testing a library call. So this library call, it doesn't have a lot of stack trace. There's not a lot of things happening that give me an indication of what is going on. So I'm kind of at a loss for like exactly what could be the problem other than kind of like, you know, scouring the code and, you know, we don't want to do that. We want to work a little bit more efficiently than that. There is an interactive debugger in Foundry, so which we can turn that on. So dash dash debug turns on the interactive debugger. Many people will find that this interactive debugger is not as, uh, let's call it user friendly as traditional source code debuggers. It works from the opcode level. And what you'll find is the opcodes are very verbose. There's a lot of opcodes happening. And so I'm just hitting down arrow, down arrow, kind of stepping through everything that's happening. Um, what I've found is rather than trying to understand every single opcode, um, it's a good idea to kind of just keep stepping down until you get to the problematic code, right? So I'm not going to like just start and like try to read and understand, you know, the stack creation, you know, you can have bugs that depend on how the stack is created, in which case you got to get more in the weeds with that. But I think that my um, problem in my code is like specific to this function itself. So let's see if I can step into this and understand anything about what's going on. So there's a require statement here. It's not being thrown, so I'm just going to keep stepping over that. Okay, keep stepping until I get back to my code. I may have to edit out some of this. You can see that it's a very verbose execution of every single thing that's happening, which may be useful in some cases, but in many cases, it's actually too verbose, right? Because I actually want to be able to step over these. This is sort of like if you are used to traditional debuggers, step into, right? And we can see that all of our code depends on a lot of other code. So let's move to the next. So the S command can help us in this situation. If we hit um, S, it'll move to the next jump. So this will help us loop through. So now it's iterating over the Taylor series. I'm just going to speed ahead here. Okay, finally we're out. <laughs> um, that was quite a detour. Uh, okay. And so we have this value um, that's been returned. It's also really unfortunate that this is kind of like an opaque hex value. So we have no idea if this is the value that um, we're interested in. Okay. So the debugger, you know, although um, it can provide some useful information in certain cases, it can really be um, over the top, and it's not as user-friendly as you might want. One thing that can be useful in a situation where you're really stuck is to use good old-fashioned printf debugging, what we used to call printf debugging back in the day. 
um, where we actually import console um, from port standard console. And then um, now, of course, we're going to just uh, remove all this code before we ship our contract. But if we're really stuck, that might be helpful because this will actually just get us past the point where we're at. So I'm really interested in what this quantity is. Let's try printing that out. And if I look at it, um, oh, sorry, I still had the debug. Get rid of that. Um, I can see these quantities. And I happen to know these quantities are correct. 2154 is what I'm looking for for the first bin. So it still seems like something's wrong. Um, with what's being returned. So maybe here we can do another printf statement about what's being returned. And let's try it again. Okay. Okay. So let's see, it says the price that's being returned is Point, 0 0.25, so this is in fixed point. So this is weird because this is, should have actually gone through the first bucket, calculated the, how much is in there, iterated through that. So it should actually be on the next bucket. So this looks like what the bug is. So when it returns, it's already exceeded the current tally. That's what this test is telling us. So the bug is here. We want to return the next bucket. So it's a little bit easier with printf style debugging. Now I have to go back and remove that. Um, another trick that I sometimes use if I'm not going to use the console is just emitting a, lo uh, a log event. So sometimes what I will do is I will throw off some simple events. Something like that, so that I can do essentially the equivalent of printf debugging. So, and this function, this is not a great way to do it because um, I have these set as pure functions, and that's going to mess some things up. So I'm actually just going to back this change out. But you see what I mean. Um, the problem with these event logs is, once again, they have to be removed. And so it can be confusing later on when you're cleaning up your code. You might forget these event logs or something. Um, so just always use that as kind of like a last resort debugging scenario. Those are the main uh, strategies for debugging that I wanted to go through. One other thing I did want to show you related to the um, this dash VVV. So this prints out a stack trace of the, the function that you're calling itself. Sometimes it's really useful to see the stack trace of the setup now this test doesn't doesn't have a setup because I'm debugging libraries, but if I was to have a setup, you know, I could add some code here and I could set up my contract. Now in this case, if I want to see the setup as part of the stack trace as well, I would do four Vs, V, 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 V. Um, and here it would do output both the setup and the um, function test that I'm that I'm singling out. Now, of course, my setup is not doing anything, so it's not again, it's not interesting. But there's many cases where outputting that is very is very interesting. 
So that's a simple example of how to debug a failing test in Foundry, or how to debug in general in Foundry. This works for a lot of different conditions and cases.